everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Helen and I upload weekly videos on simplicity and joyful living. With all the sales happening right now, I thought today I want to share with you my five tips on how I shop intentionally to maintain a small wardrobe. I have a fairly small wardrobe. I would say at any given time of the year, I have between 25 and 35 pieces. I don't really consider this a capsule wardrobe because I feel like the term capsule wardrobe implies that it's a capsule from within your larger wardrobe, whereas my 25 to 35 pieces does include everything I own. It includes outerwear, but it does not include my activewear, pajamas, or loungewear. I don't include those pieces because I wouldn't wear those pieces outside of the home and they are for a specific purpose. So, um, but if I do include them, I don't actually own that many pieces of those items. It would be maybe an additional 10 pieces total. This wasn't always the case for me. If you've seen my first video where I share my journey going from an overwhelmed and stressed mom to a master level Komari consultant today, I talked about how I used to own a hundred pairs of shoes or over a hundred pairs of shoes. And I used to have a walk-in closet just filled to the brim with my stuff. And in addition to the walk-in closet, I also had a dresser outside of the room. I just found that clothing storage was never enough. Over the years, as I have gotten older and just going through several lifestyle and size changes, and I think just by me getting more comfortable in my skin and developing my own personal style, I just found that the size of my wardrobe naturally evolved to the size that it is currently. This is just the amount that feels right for me and it might not be the right amount for you. It might be too little or it might be too much even. And that's okay. As a Komari consultant, I help many people go through their closets and I know that the number is different. The right number is different for everybody. And that's what the process is really about. It's not about adhering to owning a specific number of items. It's about finding out what is the amount of items that feels right for you? What do you need to have a home that supports your lifestyle? And what kind of clothing do you need to support the lifestyle that will bring you the most joy? They say the average person wears 20% of their clothing 80% of the time. And that definitely used to be true for me. However, I just found that when I have more clothes, it didn't give me more options, it gave me more stress. I was always stressed about what to wear and I felt guilty for thinking that I have nothing to wear when the closet is so filled to the brim. And now, even though I have less, I never been more excited to get dressed in the morning. I love knowing that I can just go into my closet, pick out anything and just feel fabulous in whatever I need to get ready for the day. My first tip for you is have a list and stick to it. I am not perfect and sometimes I want to make impulse purchases as well. And I find that this tip really helps me maintain a small wardrobe. So how I do this is I keep a document on my phone in the notes app where I list out all the items I would like to have in my ideal wardrobe. So these are not aspirational items. These are items that I need for my real life. How I do it is I list it by category. And then if I already have those items in my wardrobe, I would list out what those items are. So this way I can see if there are any gaps in my wardrobe and what I need to prioritize. I don't have an unlimited amount of money to spend on clothing. So I find that having this list really helped me prioritize need versus want. Of course, when I say need versus want, I don't mean a basic necessity need because let's be honest, all of these items are most likely wants. What I mean by need versus want is more about prioritizing. Prioritizing how you spend your money based on what you need more of right now, how you will benefit from those purchases more. For example, if I went to a store and I fall in love with a beautiful dress, I would remind myself to look on my list of clothing and this would remind me whether or not I have a dress that would fulfill the same purpose or same situations they need and perhaps i already have a dress that really sparks joy that i would wear for this type of event that this other dress could fulfill and 
I would see that maybe I have other gaps in my wardrobe that needs to be fulfilled more urgently. Maybe it's winter that's coming up and I need a new pair of winter boots, or maybe I need to replace a blazer or a pair of jeans. This would just help me prioritize my spending as I don't have an unlimited amount of money to spend on clothing. I find that being able to prioritize my spending really helps me put my money where it matters most. My second tip for you is to sleep on it because honestly, sometimes that is the best solution to just walk away or close your computer browser and just don't think about it and see if you even remember tomorrow that you want this piece still. Because in many cases, I find that sometimes I might remember a week later or a month later about something that I saw that I desperately wanted at that moment, but I forgot about it as soon as I left the shop. This also gives you a chance to rethink that purchase with different perspective, whether or not you want to prioritize your spending, even not just in clothing, maybe you want to spend the money instead on a course or upcoming trip or a new computer. I don't know, but it just gives you a chance to think about it, which I think is really important to just take a moment. And sometimes I find that by taking that extra moment, it helps me realize maybe this purchase is not in alignment with my value, or maybe that it was just the, the thrill of the sale or just something exciting in the air. Or maybe I had a void and I was feeling vulnerable or emotional that day and I was really just filling a void. So thinking about a purchase, it's definitely a great idea when you can. My third tip for you is consider how does this item contribute to my ideal life? In the Kumari method, we are striving to create a home that supports you to live the life that brings you the most joy. And your clothing supports you to live that life as well. It allows you to do the activities that you enjoy and it helps you feel comfortable and look your best. When you consider an, a purchase in the terms of, am I wearing this item in my ideal life? And what situation am I wearing this in my ideal life? It will help you determine whether this is an item for your current life or your aspirational life. It will also help you determine if this item fits into the things that you like based on the clothing that you know you love and wear. For example, if you are a big fan of heels and you see everybody is buying sensible walking shoes, but you just know that that isn't for you. So even if you see a beautiful pair of sensible walking shoes, you know that this is just not something I would wear. And if I do wear it, I wouldn't feel good wearing it. So we can let go of that purchase. And vice versa, if you are a sensible walking shoes type of person and you don't really like wearing anything with a heel above two inches maybe, then anytime you see a beautiful pair of shoes, you won't compromise on the maximum height. If you know what you like, you be you. My fourth tip for you is only buy something if it's perfect. And what I mean by this is when I went through the Komari process myself and going through my clothes and letting go of so many items, I learned that often the items I let go of, I knew there was something that wasn't quite right when I bought it, but somehow I convinced myself I could make it work. So it could be maybe the shirt is a little bit short or maybe it's too long or maybe the skirt is too long or maybe it's too tight or maybe the material is a little bit itchy or it's not my favorite color. There's always something about it that bothered me when I tried it on, but somehow I thought, well, everything else is right. Maybe the price is right, or maybe I like the color, but not the material, or I like the fit, but not the fabric. And I buy it anyway, thinking that I could somehow make it work. Usually your intuition is right. So trust your gut and if you, if you feel like something isn't perfect while you're trying on that item, don't purchase it. My last tip for you is don't buy something just because it's on sale. And this I think is really important right now because there's lots of sales happening and sometimes we are worried that we might miss out on a good deal if we don't make that purchase right away. However, if I learned anything in the last few years, it's that stores that have sales will always find another holiday or excuse or reason to have another sale. 
just this month alone, there is Singles Day, pre-Black Friday, Black Friday is happening, and then there'll be Cyber Mond Monday, and I'm sure there'll be something else, and in Canada, we have Boxing Day coming up right after Christmas, and then probably a New Year's blowout or something. There's always going to be another sale, so don't worry about missing out on a sale. It's not a huge deal. It's just stuff, and if you missed it, I'm sure you can get it again. So those are my five tips on how I shop intentionally to maintain a small wardrobe. I hope you find those tips useful and if you do, please give me a thumbs up on this video. And if you have any other tips that you would like to share with me and other viewers of this video, please share it below. I love to learn more from you as well. And if you like content like this, I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot of fun contents planned in the upcoming weeks. Until next time, choose joy, live well.